ET here coming at you with a quick talk about dark pools. We're going to just demystify them a little bit today, get a little bit better understanding and kind of alleviate some confusion that we usually see when it involves dark pools. First off, dark pools are not, hear me out, are not calls or puts, bull, bear necessarily. They are simply pretty much, I would say, support and resistance levels, but they do leave breadcrumbs that can help us. So one of the questions we always get, was that a call or a put? Well, it's a dark pool. Also, they are generally bought off exchange in massive amounts. So imagine you are buying a billion dollars worth of SPY and you do it on exchange. Yes, that's a buy and a sell, if you will, but that would cause some crazy movements in every ticker when we get into the hundreds of millions or billions of dollars in purchases. So, the Dunoff Exchange, sometimes we get them a little bit delayed, up to 24 hours, but they do leave little bread, bread, bread crumbs for us in price. One of the ones I want to point out, we're just going to take a look at SPY really quick here. On Friday, when we opened, our largest aggregate dark pool was 602.54, which we went from all the way up here down to here, and we breached that level into these levels right here. So... The further we get from our largest aggregate, the more I start to look towards that level. So Friday was an easy short once we saw all that bearish flow and a bunch of things started to fall in place there and we dipped all the way down. However, now our largest ag has flipped up to 609.65 on SPY. So now we start to look for some lows to target that upper aggregate at some point. This big green bar is the easiest thing you can really look for on any ticker. And we'll go through a few and take a look at a few as we go along. So now that we know what dark pools aren't and what they are, which I always call them breadcrumbs, they kind of slowly lead us to where we need to go and give us a good implication. You do, however, need to take a look at gamma profiles and the daily trends and all those things for individual tickers as you go along and don't just blindly say i'm going to target 609.65 now that we've hit these lower levels here that's exactly where we're going and maybe we do quickly that that is always a possibility but you want to follow the trend of what is going on through net flow and gamma profile and everything else so we've seen our dark pool levels here i will say we when you come up to this page here, you'll see SIG prints, which is very, very large prints at certain levels. If there's none here, you can usually find them down here. They'll be highlighted in red or green. We don't have any to take a look at right now, but if we did, we would see them highlighted red or green. I also want to point out to ignore the highlighted red or green. That is really dependent upon bull bear. That color comes from where price is in reference to to that level. So if it shows up as red, price would be above. If it shows up as green, price would be below as support. Think of it as support and resistance, but ignore those colors. Really, you just want to look for those breadcrumbs as we go along. So to get to this page, I just want to point out if you're new, you come here, you click on your radio button, and you click dark pool here. This is for your ticker dashboard. That is your individual spots. Okay, that's for your individual tickers. Your overall dark pools are going to be here under market dark pool. So pretty simple to take a look at there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to roll through and we're going to pick up, let's say, Amazon really quick. I think we covered it on Thursday night, took a big dip. So Amazon had some prints at 223.7. That is about the high of day, probably on Friday, and it went on down. But check this out. We hit this level right around here on Friday. We got below that, actually, and our largest ag is still quite far away. So if we're wanting to pair some things together, let's go ahead and take a look at how we could potentially pair this for a long trade if we were looking to do that and sentiment catches up. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our Amazon individual options dashboard and take a look at its gamma so we can learn how to pair. All right, here we are on Amazon's options dashboard. We want to take a look at a couple things. It's algo flow if you want. I don't pay as much attention to that as I do. It's net flow, which is sort of mixed right here. You can also scroll through those days to start to see where we are on bull bear. So we dropped big there on that bullish area, and then we managed to get back up even after that big dip that we've been having. So going through, you can go ahead and take a look and see what its gamma profile looks like. So we're below this 220 right now we're really in we're really into that 
into that lower, lower range right around here, this 215. I think we close right below this, about 216 something. As you can see, the biggest pull is up here at 225. But something we pointed out in the GEX video shows us that a lot of its gamma rolled off on Friday. When you see these big bars, I always ignore an over the weekend hold when I see a bar this big closing up on a Friday, right? We had an OPEX. So all a lot of its gamma rolled off. So what I want to do is I want to wait till Monday. Even if I miss a little bit of a move, I want to wait till Monday and see how this profile changes about an hour and a half into the market. All of this will change a little bit and we'll see some different things. The whale targets up here will update a little faster. We'll start to see, as you can see here, 220 is a level that they're wanting to pull towards. And then 235 is showing us some resistance right now. We do have a whale target video that you should watch on our YouTube which you can just scroll through after you watch this to take a look at that. Also right there, it shows 215 coming up as somewhat supportive. So if we hold that and then we see the gamma remain roughly the same down here, remember green, green repels, red attracts. So red would say that we would find our way back to 225 if 220 is breached, giving us a top around 227 for that week. But remember, ton of gamma rolled off, so take your time. Wait for this update an hour and a half into the market open on Monday. See what this gamma profile looks like and make sure you've checked that before you decide you're long or short. Then check your green and your red and make sure the pulls are where you want it to be in the direction you're looking to go that match your dark pools. So plain and simple, that's how we kind of take those breadcrumbs and we start to piece together a long and short trade. We look, we look at a few things from the platform. We don't really have to spend all of our time digging into every aspect of the data. We really just want to find some confluence between multiple things that would make sense for an entry and then plan our exit the same way. So if we were just looking, if that Amazon gamma profile holds, we were looking at if we break the 220, I would say if I were long, I would start to scale up all the way along the way up to that 229 area. Probably that's not going to be, in, be a strike, so it would be 230, 235, something like that. But that is a simple way to go ahead and look about it. So dark pools really aren't that mystical. They're just the breadcrumbs we use to go along. Let's go ahead and take a look at another ticker. This time we'll take a look at hood. Hood has been on an epic run lately, but it got up into these highs right around here into this 63 level. And then our largest ag was far below. Now, this one's a bit tricky when it comes to our gamma profile because we really needed to lose an important level to get down here, which we did end up dipping nicely into this area. So once again, we were far away from our largest ag when price was ripping up there early week and made it all the way down into our largest aggregate dark pool. Checking our gamma, I've got it pulled up for us. That breach of 59 was very, very important. Once it couldn't get back above, that is a repel level. Remember, red attracts green repels, and where we are in reference to those greens and reds is very important. So we got to that 59, we breached it, and then our lower pulls took over as that's how we were. Now remember, we always check this GEX by expiry, so huge one rolling off on Friday here as well, so we'll wait for the update on Monday to see how that goes. Hopefully, this is a little bit a little bit easier for you to understand now and how to start to pair it with your trades as you move along, taking dark pool, taking gamma, taking those whale targets. But now we're going to move on to our overall dark pool page. And to get here, you just follow that market dark pool spot that I showed you over here in our radio buttons. And what I'm really looking for here is I really just like to filter by value. You can do a bunch of filtering here. You can choose your different your different watch lists and, you know, add and remove certain tickers so you only see certain things. But what I'm really looking for here and what I like to do is I like to look for just how much it was. Click twice on value and you start to see the large amounts. What I don't look at, because I'm going to look at those on their individual pages more often, are the indices. I'm looking for spots on big on, on big spots on individual tickers that might interest me to mark those levels down to see what's happening. So quite a quite a few at 216.58 on Amazon. That is a pretty big buy there, and I'm pretty sure that's right around where we closed on Friday. That is our exact close 
on Friday. So 216.58 was our exact close. So above or below that, then we can get some in more information as we go along. So pretty simply there, I don't look for anything crazy. What I really look for is dark pool trades that have a large amount of size. And I will come down here and do and do the same thing to the dark pool ticker dashboard. And I will just look for kind of net value. What was the most that we saw on certain things just to see, just to get a little bit of an inclination as to what we're looking at. One of the things I like to look for is when we see this, how much percent we're getting up. I will go dig in deeper into these and see, okay, what is H S H I C? Why did it receive so, so many dark pools? Uh, so many, so many, so much, so much of a high percent of change. And what were those levels at? And we'll go ahead. We can go ahead and take a look at that right now, just to see. So taking a look at that, we can definitely see right around seventy-seven twenty-four, which was right around that Friday closing price. We saw a ton of dark pool activity. One more thing I want to point out is I almost always ignore the at ask and at bid. Not too interested in that. I'm merely interested in the levels and the amount that's being purchased in reference to how far price away is from it. I'm hoping this kind of helped you smooth out a little bit what dark pools are, how to look for them, and how to use those breadcrumbs paired with your gamma, what to check on the gamma to be safe to start finding your entries and your exits on trades. That's all for now. Everybody have a good day and stay safe out there.